In today's video, which memory card to choose for the Sony Alpha 7 V, a tech deep dive into how fast is the Alpha 7 V actually in burst mode. Spoiler, it's not 30 FPS and a lot more of this beautiful noise. Before I can explain to you which memory card you should or shouldn't choose for the Alpha 7 V, we have to do a little tech deep dive into continuous shooting speed of the Alpha 7 V because it's really important to know which memory card you actually need. There are some variables. As most or many of you already know, the Sony Alpha 7 V is equipped with two memory card slots. One slot is for SD memory cards only, the other one is a combined slot for both SD memory cards and CF Express Type A, the latter much faster. I will pick a CF Express Type A card for the demonstration. It's one of the fastest cards we had in our tests. The camera is set up to war in lossless mode plus hive in 422 10 bit. So basically the highest amount of data you can get per frame, so to speak. The buffer can hold roughly 30 to 40 pictures depending on the war mode you use. So it's either lossless HQ or the more lossy mode, however to call it. And after the buffer is filled, you heard it's getting much slower. Buffer, out of the buffer or buffer is filled up. So why is it? Because it's really different to, let's say, a Nikon Z6 III, Z8. Those cameras can shoot much longer as their, at their determined speeds, let's say 20, 30 FPS whatsoever. Usually if you have a really fast CF Express Type B card, in case of those cameras, until the card is filled up. Why not with the Sony Alpha 7 V? In my analysis, I took yeah, almost two days and uncountable amount of pictures with the Alpha 7 V. And as it turns out, the also new Bions XR2 image processing unit is really limited in terms of how many images per second it can handle. So we are not talking about a bottleneck in the memory card controller, so that's definitely not a limit. It's actually how many pictures it can handle and the amount differs in the mode you're shooting. So as I told you before, the camera is set up to wall plus hive, so the highest amount of data. And you can hear we are in the image buffer. The buffer is filled really quick and afterwards the speed is limited to eight and a half pictures roughly. So now you may be telling me, yeah, of course, wall plus hive, so it's a little bit more to handle. So it should absolutely change if I set up the camera for, in this case, wall only. So skip the hive image, that's what I did. And it's basically the same. So you have, you have a, just a little, little, little more time in the beginning because the buffer isn't filled up as quickly due to the fact that there isn't a secondary hive or JPEG, whatever image that has to be stored. But the time difference is really, really, really small. Afterwards, it's the same speed, eight and a half frames per second. The only real difference in war is when I choose the lossy mode, so not HQ, not lossless, the most bottom in the menu. And now you can hear the buffer lasts longer and after the buffer is filled up, it's faster. So now we're talking about roughly 13 frames per second and we can get even quicker. Now I'm shooting, for example, JPEG only and therefore the camera is even faster. So image buffer, still in the image buffer, and you can hear the image buffer lasts really, 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 really long, but it can also get limited. So we're definitely not talking about a limitation from the memory card controller, 
if you can achieve really large images. So let's say you're shooting with a real high ISO, therefore a lot of noise, there's a lot of detail on the image, not a lot of bokeh, so stopping down your lens, so maybe, I don't know which case, but you know, if, if it's just big files, maybe you can get around 700 megabytes per second. I don't know, we limited to about 515 megabytes per second using CF Express. And you are limited by the camera processing power. The Band XR2 can't handle more images per second. Therefore, the type of memory card you need differs a lot. By the way, we have tested dozens and dozens of memory cards, both CF Express Type A and SD memory cards, so from really expensive, really quick, to really cheap and not as fast. Check out all results in the video description and pinned as the first comment. Also in the video description some recommendations if you don't want to invest too much time. And now let's continue with the analysis. Okay, finally, which memory card should you choose for the Sony Alpha 7 V? And here it gets really interesting or even kind of weird because as we have just learned, the speed of the camera depends on the quality you choose. So let's say wall lossless versus Hive, but obviously also the file size differs. And therefore, at first glance, there's no real correlation between how fast your memory card should be and how high the quality is. So you could increase or decrease the quality of the pictures, but the speed could both increase or decrease as well. So both the, let's say, highest demanding modes are either lossless war or JPEG files, because JPEG files are much larger compared to Hive files, but the camera achieves 22 frames per second. So it's almost three times as fast compared to lossless or HQ mode. So therefore it's almost the same speed you need in terms of the memory card behind to achieve the highest speed continuously. In terms of JPEG, we're talking about maybe 400, 450 megabytes per second wall lossless mode or especially lossless plus Hive or JPEG, we can easily talk about 450, 550 megabytes per second. So definitely in the CF Express Type A range. But let's say you just want to shoot in HQ. No Hive, the backup, just HQ mode. The camera is limited to eight and a half frames per second. The files are kind of small and therefore we are in the range of about 200 megabytes per second. So CF Express Type A or let's say a good SD memory card, UHS-2 SD memory card, shouldn't be much of a difference. So let's check in practice. We start with the CF Express Type A card again. This camera is back to 30 frames per second, raw HQ just as I told you, so kind of small files and also kind of slow in camera. We are in the buffer, 30 frames per second. The buffer is filled up really, really, really quickly, just above a second. And as you can hear, obviously eight and a half frames per second. So not a real limitation. And the buffer is also already cleared, so kind of fast. And now I don't even choose the fastest SD memory card, just a good price performance card. And the actual write speed we measured is about 190 megabytes per second. You can find all results in the link in the video description in the first comment that is pinned. We tested about 15 CF Express cards and way more SD memory cards. So check out the results also with hourly updated price performance recommendations. So back with the SD memory card. We're in the buffer, buffer is filled really quick. And I measured it, we are not talking about eight and a half frames per second, it's more like six to seven. If I would choose the fastest SD memory card with V90 specification, we reach almost the same speed as with a CF Express Type A card, because again, it's not limited by memory card speed, it's just limited by processing power from the Sony Alpha 7 V. 
So it's been a long time since I had such an interesting camera, which on one hand is really fast in terms of just pure speed, 30 frames per second, not just in JPEG or whatever limitation. On the other hand, also not limited by the memory card controller, but somewhere in between. So that was kind of interesting for me. If you find this video helpful, please leave a thumbs up, maybe consider to subscribe. And again, all results are linked in the video description and in the first comment. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.